Hey guys, it's Jessica Fury. Tune in every Monday for new episodes. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Welcome back to the podcast. Today we have Angela Duncan. She is the creator of Empower Her Money. She has the number one female podcast that helps to change financial lives. She was raised in Section 8 housing, and she is a survivor of childhood abuse and poverty. And in her real estate business, she has over $2 billion in real estate sales. Angela, welcome to the podcast. For having me today. Yeah, it's so great to have you on. I love the pink. It just works so well with like my own brands. I do everything with pink. Is it something you've always been like connected to? Or is it just something that you just like love? Yeah, I've always loved pink and I'm super excited that Barbie brought it back and made it popular again. So thank you, Barbie. But yeah, pink has been my color. Does it do you like have it tie in with like your business? And like your brand yeah. or it's just something that works? Yeah, absolutely. I think pink is a very feminine color. And since my audience is female entrepreneurs, um, I just think that I love pink and I'm very feminine when it comes to things that I talk about and, and investing. So it just kind of goes along with my brand. In fact, there are times when I go out and I wear not pink and people will come up and say, why are you not wearing pink? <laughs> so it's great branding. I love it. I have like blush pink for like all the branding that I use. And I just like sometimes so people will be like, oh, my God, like, man, you, your phone case is even like pink. And I'm like, I don't know. I just actually really love it. But I love, you know, I made a connection to you on your Instagram. And one of the things that I really love so much that you do is you have created not only a foundation, but a community around financial success and financial stability. And before I even get into that, I would love for you to share growing up what being in in a financial insecure upbringing looked like and what it uh, and what it brought out in you. Yeah. So like you were telling my story, I am a survivor of childhood abuse and poverty. Um, when I was 18 years old, I moved out of that situation. And I thought that if I had money, that it would just solve all my problems. You know, growing up in poverty, we didn't have money. I saw other people had money. They looked like they were happy. And so I started to pursue, how do I get this tool that we call money? And so I went to school, got my finance degree. I've been, and what I find from writing my book, Empower Your Money, last year, was that I was always chasing money as a way for me to be happy. But what I never truly worked on was my money mindset. And all of the things that I learned as a child about money and scarcity and being scared about not having money was something I never dealt with. And so I really went down a path just to learn how to kind of revamp my mind around money and then have this different money mindset so that I would stop chasing money as a way for me to be happy, but for me to be happy first and welcome money and abundance into my world. And what did that look like? Yeah. So it's been a recent journey for me. And I know for myself that this is something that I'm going to work on for my entire life. But what I did and what I do activities now with other women is I talk about what is it that you were taught as a child? Why do you have this idea about money? Because you do research um, about your brain and a lot of your subconscious beliefs were formed by the time you were age seven. So if you can imagine this seven-year-old version of yourself making money decisions, you just wouldn't allow that. You know, I'm a mother, my daughter's 20. When she was seven, she's not smart enough to make business and money decisions. So you kind of have to not so much unlearn because it's already there, but change the way that you look at things, change the way that you feel about money. What is your truth today? And you have to remind yourself of that. I'm a visual person, so I would write things up on the wall. I have post-its. I actually have tons of pink post-its all around me. And it's just reminding myself that that version of myself as a kid is no longer my truth. That that might have been my environment in which I grew up, but it's not my truth today. So I have to reframe my brain to let myself know that I do deserve money, that I do have abundance in my life, and that money is a tool that I can use for great things all around me, for my friends, family, for my business, for my clients, for my church, and just reframing the brain so that I can accept money into my life and be a happy person first, and then the money flows in when I'm allowing for it to be abundant. When you were a kid, up, up to the time before you decided to move at 18, did you struggle with 
insecurities, not feeling enough because you you grew up where your parents didn't have money? Did you feel as if like, I'm not good enough to do these activities or any anything that would put your brain or your energy or your mindset into a place of like, well, I can't do these things. And when I can do these things, I'm going to buy a Mercedes. I'm going to buy, I'm going to blank, blank, blank. What were those things that you had to look at? And I know that you and I shared when we were talking before being on the podcast that you do go to therapy, but what are some of the things that, that really started to like shift for you from those things from childhood? Yeah. So as a child, I felt embarrassed. Um, you know, I started working at age 14 and, and, and so that I could buy necessities, right? Like new clothes for school. I mean, thankfully I stopped growing when I was in ninth grade, uh, but I well felt ashamed. I had to get to school early so that I could get the free breakfast. I got free lunch from school in high school. I didn't have new clothes. You know, I wasn't the kid who had a car wrapped in a bow for my 16th birthday. I actually didn't drive until I was 18 because in the state of California, you have to pay for a class in order to get a license and I couldn't afford it. So I had to wait until I was 18 just to get my driver's license. So I carried a lot of shame and guilt from not knowing about money. And maybe that, you know, gave me a little chip on my shoulder because I had to prove to myself that I could earn money. Um, but, you know, after many years of chasing it, I feel like I'm such in a great place now where I'm happy with myself first and then I work on the money piece. Um, but it took me many years and many years of therapy of going through and figuring out what are those early memories and why I was feeling like I did and why I still have, you know, anxiety around money and always feeling like I didn't have enough or I wouldn't have enough or like I would grow old and not be able to pay my bills or live with my kid, you know? So really thinking about all of those thoughts that were going through my head and knowing where I came from and knowing that maybe if my mom had better education, better financial education, I wouldn't have had to endure that embarrassment I felt as a kid. But I also look at it as a blessing because now I can empathize and be empathetic towards people who are in hardship situations. And now I get the opportunity to teach them a different way, to teach them how to break their own cycles from what they've taught or what they've been taught. And then hopefully help, you know, create some generational wealth for them and change the lives of all of their family in front of them. And so had I not gone through that situation and through those hardships, I wouldn't have been able to empathize the way that I can now and the way that I can connect with people and help teach them that there is a better way, but they do have to take the time to get education. They have to take the time to implement what they learn. Um, it's not something that's going to be handed to them. And it's a lot harder for us when we started off with nothing and when we didn't have the education to shift that mindset so that we can have abundance in our life and hopefully teach our kids and our family how they can have abundance in their life. But it really, it, it takes that, that effort to want to shift and have a different lifestyle. You know, you said something that I was like, oh, that's perfect. That's the exact thing that people do, need to do. And that's implement the mindset. Mm -hmm. What are some specifics that you would recommend here where somebody can start implementing tools that have worked for you or tools that have suggested to you? What would those things be? Yeah. So I'm a big believer how you start your day is so important. You know, the first five minutes of your day, you can control. And even if you're married and you have kids and you have a chaotic life and work and kids and all that balance, wake up five minutes earlier and control your day. So for me, this is what it, this is what it looks like. I will grab my journal and I go outside. I live in Miami, so I'm blessed to have amazing weather here. But I go outside and I think about what are my current goals? And not only what are my current goals, but what am I going to feel like when I accomplish those goals? As women, we're very heart-centered and we lead with our heart. So understanding the emotional piece and the excitement or perhaps who's there with you celebrating these goals with you, it just helps tie your heart to your brain. And what happens psychologically is your brain starts to look for those opportunities. But if you can start your day in a positive manner with gratitude, and I, I, I've done a video on this, and I know it kind of sounds silly, but being grateful for just the simplest things in life, you know, the sun is shining. I woke up today. I have a car that gets me from point A to point B. I have a roof over my head. I can turn on the faucet and there's water that comes out. You know, it's like thinking about just the most basic things and starting your day with gratitude, with peace, with quiet and with intentionality about what you 
want out of life, controlling that first piece is really key in order for you to make big changes in your life. And when you started to do those things, did you start to see those big changes in your life? I did. I think when you write down your goals and you're intentional with that and your your brain really, truly actively is looking for it. And a great example of this, and I give this one all the time, is when you're looking to buy a car, all of a sudden your brain starts seeing this car everywhere. And it's not because more of them exist, but it's because you told your brain, this is what I want. And so when you are intentional and in tying your heart and your brain together, it really does look for opportunities. The brain wants to accomplish what you're telling it to do. And things will just seem like they appear, but they were there. It's just now your brain is actively looking for those opportunities so that you can accomplish the goals that you're telling it that you want in life. Would you make a suggestion to someone to say, do this for 30 days, do it for 60 days, do it for 90 days? What would is there is that a suggestion that you would make to someone who's looking to implement more abundance into their life or money or opportunity? Yeah, five minutes a day. And, you know, there's different studies that talk about how long you have to do something to become a habit. But I wouldn't necessarily set a time frame. Just say today I'm implementing this one change in my life for five minutes out of a 24 hour period and protect that time. You know, as women, as mothers, as wives, it's hard for us. I know we want to take care of everybody else first, but if you don't take care of yourself first, it's impossible for you to truly be the best version of yourself for everybody that is around you. And so when you start to control your own time and your own attitude first, other people are going to see it. Hopefully they join a board. Hopefully they, they do their own, you know, journaling in the morning. Um, but just let them know, Hey, I need five minutes for me because I want to be the best version of myself for myself, for my family, for my business, for my friends. And so they have to understand that that time is your protected time and don't allow for them to change it for you. Don't put it later. Don't say, I'm going to get to it later. First thing, shift to be more grateful and outlook on life just as they implemented one small change. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that, you know, it's interesting. I'm listening to what you're saying and it's brought me back to like a specific situation that I've had, you know, that's sort of like lingering and And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because I think that it can really help someone. And I think that one of the things that my platform continues to create is just talking about like the reality of things and somebody can connect to those things that they're like, wow, I'm understood. I'm heard. And you come from a background of real estate and you were really, really successful in your business of real estate. And you shared with me that you sold one of the companies. But I want to just keep the specifics around the money and the abundance and creating your reality of something. And, you know, I made a career change into real estate and it's one of my goals to leave um, another business and fully embrace the business in real estate. And most people that go into real estate, they don't make money through the door. And it's frustrating, even if you've been in the business for two, three, four, five years, and maybe you're not like, it's not snowballing, you're not getting the customers, you're not making the money, you're not doing the type of business that you would like to be doing, maybe you you are doing the work, but it's not really showing up in the physical way. So I think like one of the things that has been sort of going on, whether it's I'm using a personal example or I'm using an example of another person, you know, they're they're in this business of real estate or they're starting a new business. You know, it can be starting a new business in real estate or they're just starting a new business and career. And they've been working on that business, let's say two, three, four years, five years, and they're not seeing physical results. They're not seeing the changes in income. They're not seeing changes in the abundance or the customers or the business, anything that could be aligned to their goals and intentions. And let's say that they are doing the work. They're putting in the energy, they're putting in the work, they're doing the affirmations, but they're still not seeing the results. And they're frustrated because they're like, but I'm doing this. Like, What more am I supposed to do? What would you suggest to that person? And whether it's a woman or whomever it may be, and because this is a community of women for your brand as well, what is something that you would suggest? 
I love this question. Two things. One, they need to have a coach or a mentor because what they're doing is not working. And if you go back to the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result is insane. So I don't want you to be insane. I want you to hire a coach, find someone that is going to help take you to the next level, whatever that means to you. Find and someone else who's successful. And I know that can be tough sometimes because there's so many coaches out there. But if you see someone else being successful, ask them, do you coach or did someone coach you or who do you know? So that would be number one. Number two is if you've been doing this and it's not creating an income, then maybe it's a true business. And you have to come to terms with that with yourself because as much as you want it to be a business, if there's not clients on the other side that find value in what you're doing in order to pay you and for you to create an income, then maybe that's not the right time for this business. Maybe you need to pivot to something a little bit different. Or maybe you're just not meant to be an entrepreneur. And that's okay too. Not all of us are meant to be entrepreneurs. There are people that work for me or that have worked for me that would not make great entrepreneurs, but they make amazing partners to work with me because they have incredible talents, but growing and scaling a business is extremely difficult. And being a leader, knowing marketing and hiring right people can be very difficult. So you might have to come to terms with yourself that if you don't pivot your business to something that clients want and will pay for, then maybe being an entrepreneur is not the right route for you. And your skills might be better used working for someone else. And yes, you're going to be growing someone else's company. But if you're happier and creating wealth for your family, then that should be what is important to you at the end of the day, not owning your own business, because it's really not meant for all people. And when you talk to women who come to you with these situations, you know, I'm sure that they're getting some sort of disappointment. And if they're like, but I really believe in myself and I believe in myself, what are the things that you say that could be supportive to be like, okay, like what are, cause I know that you do have a connection to your own faith to things. Yeah. Um, I believe in you too. I want to be your cheerleader. Let's figure out what's going to work for you because right now it's not working. So what changes do we need to make in order for you to be successful, right? World we have to be able to change. We have to be able to adapt. We have to be able to learn. So sitting down and saying, you know, this is not a failure for you. It's a learning lesson. And what are we learning from this? And now how do we change to make it into a business that is going to be profitable for you? And maybe you need to dial back. Maybe you have too many products, too many services. Maybe you need to cut back on some expenses and just take a step back and really think about what does this business look like? What do your ideal avatar clients look like? And how do we provide a service to them that they want and need and will pay for? And so if you truly want to stay as an entrepreneur, looking at it is not a failure, but a learning lesson. And then just shifting, like we need to shift our mindset. You're going to shift your business to figure out what's going to be profitable for you. And we're going to concentrate on maybe one service at a time, become the amazing expert in that service or product, and then grow from there. Because maybe you grew too fast, or maybe you're just missing your target a little bit. Maybe you got to need to do some more research and go ask clients, like, what is it that you're looking for? What do you need in this space? How can I help you? And then you build your business around that because we might know what we want and like and trust and what we're going to spend money on. But if you're not making money, then there's not really a client for you. You need to shift. You need to pivot. Well, that's so honest for you to say that. And I'm sure that even people listening to this, it kind of like broadens their their own perspective or way of thinking. Do you make would you suggest for someone to write things like to write down what it would look like for them if they were to continue with the business or writing down like skill sets that they have like because now tying in the money factor it money factor is that most people are thinking about making more money the most people that's my opinion and it's easy or simpler to say, well, it's easy to give these suggestions because you already have the money. But when you're in a place and you're not making the money that you would like to, or even make your own ends meet, how do you come in as a coach and a supporter to those individuals? Yeah. So if they're not making money to like pay their everyday necessities, go get a job. And let your business be the side business that should have been what you did from the beginning, or maybe you were profitable and now you're not. Um, figure that out first. And I love vision. So 
if you can make your goal board, you know, something that you can see every day, um, what is your product or service that you're going to work on right now? And I go back to that because I know it seems sim like very simple, but you have to start with the simplicity part of it first and then grow from there. And there's so many ways that you can advertise for free. Like for example, you know, Jessica being on your podcast, um, it didn't, you know, cost a ton of money for me to come on to your podcast. If you want to start your own podcast, there's lots of ways for you to do it for free. Create videos on social media. You can create videos on YouTube. So there's ways to find clients but you have to understand that if it's not paying your bills right now, you need to have a serious talk with yourself and figure out how do I get my bills now, go get a job, work for someone that's already in this industry, or maybe it's a partner industry and you guys can collaborate together. You can send referrals together. You know, how do you figure out how to shift that business in a way in which is going to be successful for you? And I like your idea of making it a visual aspect, you know, um, it doesn't cost a ton of money to go down to Michael's and buy a whiteboard and grab some markers. I know magazines are kind of expensive right now. So maybe you just want to print out some of what is your ideal client look like? You know, what is the product that you have? What is the ideas behind it? And who is this going to serve? And then your every day is intentional. If you are not the type of person that can work from home, grab your laptop, go to Starbucks, go talk to people, network with people and figure out from them what's working and ask questions because as to me and ask me for help on something or who do you know or how do I do this I apologize Jessica it must be my connection it, it okay. says that I have full speed but That's I don't okay. know what's going on you know let's say that we're going to do an exercise and that exercise is to help create a healthy mindset around money the currency of it what it produces to others I know that you mentioned a gratitude exercise, but can you put together an exercise for our listeners to do maybe for 30 days? What would that exercise be besides the gratitude exercise? Um, your first thing is to look at the income and your expenses for your household, whether this is an activity with you or with you and your spouse. Um learning where your money is coming in and where you're spending your money and understanding what your habits are and having that serious conversation and saying, what can I cut out right now? That's not a necessity because when you get into control of your money, it really helps you to feel more confident, more confident in your spending. You know, I hear a lot of times from people that they don't even know where all of their money goes to. Like they have no clue how much they spend for their rent or mortgage. They have no clue on how much their food costs for the month because we lose that control. It really scares us when it comes to money in our mindset. So my first thing is always figure out what your household um, financial picture looks like. And when you feel like you're in control of your money, it really does go a long way along your money mindset to know that you're now in control because, you know, for me, for example, growing up in poverty, I was out of complete, I had no control at all with, right? And so now that I have control of it, I understand that it's just a tool and it's no longer an emotional piece for me. But, you know, going through that activity, knowing what your financial house looks like, going through the activity of figuring out what were you taught longer your truth and what do you need to replace that with? And then adding in the protection of your time to start off your day with the journal and the gratitude. It really does take all of those things, all three things together to shift you and even though you can do one of those, it will help you. But I recommend that you do all three activities to change the way that you look at money and understand money. And then you have to tell yourself that you deserve abundance. And, you know, people will say, oh, I don't need to make more money. I don't need to be rich. And those are just like titles or stigmas, because if you think about the more money you create, the more your family has freedom, the more you can give to charities, the more you can give to your church, all of those, you know, avenues survive on money. A church cannot run without money. A charity cannot run without money. So it's not a bad thing to have money, to create abundance, to, to have wealth. It's what you choose to do with it and understanding what your mindset is around money by doing different activities. And as you mature and as you go through different stages of your life with your wealth, those activities are going to change. The way that you feel about money, what you do with your money is going to change. And just to be a constant student of that and be in touch with how you feel and what you're thinking about money and what you allow other people to say to you about money um, is really important. Just to, that self-awareness um, is, is really key for you to continue to keep more positivity around money and to keep that shift going. 
and to always educate yourself about money. And, you know, I have fun with it. Like I take a, a small piece of my investment portfolio and um, I like whiskey. And so I give myself permission to invest in whiskey, right? Because it's fun. It's not investing isn't meant to be boring all the time. Um, but as you grow in your wealth status, um, whatever that looks like, whatever that success looks like to you, you know, giving yourself grace, it's okay to spend some money on shoes. If that's something that you like, um, figuring out what's important to your family for your future and just telling your money where to go, such a huge thing. And when you see that, you'll understand that controlling your money will really help you shift your money mindset. Yeah. Thank you. You know, I love to, to leave on that note because it's just so positive. I like to ask all my guests three questions before they leave and they can always come back, which we may have to bring you on again. What is a non-negotiable in your morning routine that sets you up for the day? Yeah. I'm protecting my time first. It's me first. I'm not selfish in doing that. It's because I want to be the most incredible version of me showing up for everybody else that's in my life. I love that. What is a piece of advice or suggestion you can offer to someone with their business or their investment or their mindset? Um, for me right now, I'm looking at alternative investing. Um, it's a whole universe that's not really open to the masses. And so the more that I can learn about it, the more that I could teach it to other people, the more availability it has to the mass of people. Um, I just feel like it helps change lives when we give that information and that education to everybody. And what would be a book or a podcast, aside from yourselves, yourself, to recommend to someone that can increase their mindset around money? Candy Valentino just um, released a book last year called Wealth Habits. It's so simple and basic information for you to follow. I absolutely love the way that she did her format. I, I'll have to look into that. What's her name? Candy Valentino. Candy Valentino. I love it. Thanks, Angela. Where can people find you? Plug yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So um, empower her money on Instagram, Angela Duncan on Facebook or LinkedIn. And of course, if you want to hear about money advice, um, empower her money podcasts on all streaming platforms, YouTube, Roku and Amazon Fire. Awesome. Ro Roku, is that what you said? Yes. The, my podcast now is on TV on Roku and Amazon Fire. Oh, that's awesome. Angela, thank you so much for being here. And you guys can follow me at Jessica J. Fury at Jessica Fury Podcast. Like, subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks again. Thank you.